Okay, we're going to run over some uh, Steinberger headless bases. Uh, I've always been a huge, huge fan of them. And you can get them kind of nowadays, these cheaper ones. This is one of them. This is a Spirit XT2. Look at that. Look at that color. Just beautiful. Sparkle. This is wooden and it has passive pickups and kind of rose. Well, I'm not even sure if it's rose anymore. It looks, yeah. You know the way it is nowadays. Okay, so it's, we'll say it's Rosewood. Um, I'm going. I've equalised all these instruments for gain. I've tried to get them as uh, evenly gained as I can because that's what you do, isn't it? If you went to a gig, you'd you turn up your gain onto, and you'd EQ them all different, which I haven't done. I haven't EQ'd them. Like I would EQ this differently to the other ones, but just to give you a, a kind of back-to-back -back example, they're all flat, uh, which isn't how I play them. Okay, so um, this is really, really light. I weigh it, I don't know what it is, like seven pounds maybe, whatever that is in metric. <laughs> but uh, I'll give you an idea of some tones. You can actually buy these new. These are about four, at the moment, the 419, something like that, if you can get one. Um, the, the usual stuff that uh, things are out of stock at the moment. But if you come across one of these, uh, they're a brilliant travel base and they are super fun to play. The only thing I'll say is that on a gig, they do tend to sit that way, you know, where um, the strap bring, brings the neck, the F down here. So there's a friend of mine, I'll just excuse the bag rattling, who has copied the, the Synapse st uh, strap hook thing, okay? So if you look at that, you see it's got a bend on it. <laughs> well, that is to take the, the instrument back in. So if it was straight, the instrument to be out here on you, this brings it back in towards you, the bend on it. And what it does is when you have it on, it will bring the strap to about the 14th fret. Is it 14? Yeah, about the 14th fret, which is better than it being at the 15, 17, 19, 21st right that's a huge difference and I've been on to them actually to make them a little bit longer so that they they bring it more towards the 12th fret which is the, you know where it, your comfort zone really but uh, Matthew James Bean is his name uh, he, he'll run one of these things up for you I'll include uh, a link if anyone's interested in he's a super talented guy he also makes these things which are very handy for Steinberger bases but this is a uh, string adapter, and what it allows you to do is use regular strings. Now, if I was pro with this, I would have had these uh, envelopes open already. But that's the idea, right? You uh, put your string through here, and then you clamp it. So it goes up here at the top. I actually have it installed on, on one of the bases, so I'll show you. So it sits up there, and you don't need to use double ball and strings. You use whatever you normally use. Okay, uh, Matthew will run you up one of them as well. Um, they also show up on places like Tolman every now and then. So anyway, uh, that being said, I'll run you through some tones. There's not really much to be said. They come with a kind of gig bag, which is like, uh, it's thin enough. It's like a slice of McDonald's cheese, um, but it's better than nothing, you know, and really for the kind of money that they're charging, it's outrageous. So that for those of you who don't know, you tune them here. You turn these little fellas here and it tunes the strings up. So uh, a Fender bass is about 26 turns an inch. You turn it here, you turn it 26 times. These are 40 turns an inch. So they tend to be really accurate to tune and they stay in tune as the other thing. It's very hard. Like how many times you knocked off the keyboards or whatever and knocked your bass out of tune. It just doesn't happen with these things. Uh, much as I love my Fenders. So, um, the other thing is the action on this is a bit low because I lent it to a buddy of mine and the neck has settled a little bit. It could, it could do with a bit of loosening actually, put it with a bow in it. But anyway, we'll, we'll, I'll just give you an idea of some of the sounds, okay? So I'm going to turn off the mic for that. All right, we're going to run through some tones on this. I'll turn the mic off as I'm doing it so you don't have to listen to uh, rattle, rattle, rattle from whatever. Okay, and we'll start with uh, both the pickups open. These are passive pickups everything's passive um, which i know a lot of you love um so here we go 
uh, both pickups on and tone open. <laughs> Okay, now uh, tone off. Okay, I didn't slap because I'm not able to slap today, but I'm going to try it. Oh, that was at the mic open. Hold on. Okay, um, so front pickup on on its own, tone open. Actually, tone off, hold on. Okay, I'm back pick up on um, with the tone open. <laughs> Okay, and with the tone closed. I told you I can't play today. And you get the idea. Okay, uh, we'll move on now. Spirit. XT2 uh, Frost Blue. This one is a 1994, I think, um, Honer B2A. I bought this new, uh, I just can't remember when, but my, <laughs> but my mum had seen me on the telly playing with somebody and she rang me the following day and she said, oh, I saw you on the telly with so-and-so. And I went, yeah. She said, that, that guitar was very big on you. And I was playing the jazz bass and uh, I watched the video and nothing um, kind of steers you. <laughs> Nothing affects you more than parental uh, criticism. So I went out and I bought this because I'd had them when I was a kid. And just thought, oh, well, they're nice and small, you know. And I actually ended up with two of them because no sooner had I ordered this one, which in 1994 cost me £380. Um, no sooner had I ordered it than uh, I, I came across an older one secondhand and decided to do a bit of a job on that one. I moved the pick up and all that kind of carry on. Anyway, this is an interesting instrument because it's active and passive and it also has this very snazzy DB bridge. So essentially what you do is you set this wheel, you set this wheelie over here to um, where you want the string to detune to. You can get down as far as B and then you flip this lever, this lever here, you flip that and it goes down, I'll show you. So if you have, you're playing me, you can drop it. Or you can down to B. And so very clever. Now the only thing again, these things tend to sit here. When you have them on a strap, they sit miles down there. Okay, so um I'll run through some of the sounds on this. We'll do passive first. As I uh, I actually uh, lost this thing for 28 years. I sold it. I couldn't remember who I sold it to. And then a mate of mine rang, uh, rang me and said he bought one of these. And did I recognize this number? And he called out this number, which was my number when I lived in Dublin. Uh, and 
which means it was mine. I used to do that. I used to write my phone number on the inside. And so it returned to me after kind of 25, 26 years, depending on when it was bought, 28 years maybe. Uh, and it was nice to have it back. All right, so um, it's very light as well. I don't know what's about eight pounds maybe. I'll weigh them all later. So uh, we're going to turn off the mic and we'll run through some tone. So we're going to have both pickups on and the tone wide open. That's what we're saying. It should The tone should operate with the battery off, but it doesn't. So I don't know if it's by design or just age. Okay, so here we go. Both pickups on. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna do a front pickup now. Okay, and back pickup. Now, I'd love to be able to put on the tone for you, like I say, but I can't. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so this little switch here, when I hit this, it's going to engage this active circuit and it's going to drive the gain here. We'll have to turn it down, but anyway, we'll do it. And you get this snazzy little red light that comes on. See the little red light? Now, what I will say is the, the, the preamp is that 90s Korean honer preamp that's in lots of their bases and it was it was okay but it was a bit tone deaf you know it wasn't terribly subtle and it was all right so the way I'd, the way i'd put it so um yeah fuck. okay turn that down it's still driving the hell out of everything anyway give you an idea uh, mic up Okay, so there's the Honor B2A. These are good fun. Like, um, they come up as a B2 without the preamp. And like I say, given the preamp is so uh, limited, I wouldn't be too concerned about getting one with a preamp. If you see one, pick it up. They're just such fun. And, and they're light and practical for, you know, travel and stuff like that. I don't think any airlines let you put stuff in the overhead bin anymore. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've never had any luck with it anyway. So that's the Honor B2A. This is another uh, special one. This is my 1986 Steinberger XL2, and it's in pink. It's the only pink one that I've ever seen. Um, it has the SS pickups from the earlier uh, instruments, the L2 series. Normally these would have had HB4 or 5s, which is a different tone. These are, this is much more like the other one, the, the, the L2. And again, this was a favorite gig and bass of mine. Um, it still is. It's just huge through a PA. It's so big. Now, a lot of that you're hearing from the mic. So what I'm going to do, I'll go through some of the tones, which are okay. All right, we'll run through some tones. I'm going to turn the mic off, though, uh, so that you don't have to listen to the sound of the strings. Um, I won't play on too fancy because I can't. I'm, I'm not able today. Whatever's wrong. So here we go, both pickups on and the tone open.
like I said, I can't play. I can't play today. Okay, so it's both pickups on. We're going to do the front pickup on only. So this goes volume, volume, passive tone, and their active pickups. So the passive tone, active pickups is a good source. I like that. Uh, so here we go. Neck pickup only. Okay, with the tone off. Okay, back pickup on these uh, is is really thin, and the, because it's right, it's the same pickup as this one, but it's right back here, so you get this kind of really uh, thin sound. I'll show you. So tone all the way open first. <laughs> Okay, and now with the tone off. Okay, that's the uh, 86 XL2. This one, this is my baby. This is a 1981 Steinberger L2. Uh, this is very, very early. It's serial number 11. I haven't cleaned it or anything. See this for here? This uh, replaces, uh, negates the need for that strap uh, hook thing. This one um, was my main gig and bass for years and years and years and years. And then I realized oh, I'm killing this thing, you know? Uh, so I retired it kind of, but every so often I'll bring it out for a gig for fun. Um, but this bass was played at Live Aid. So when you see the finale, when all the stars are on the stage, uh, the, the Boomtown Rats were the backing band for Do They Know It's Christmas. So this bass played Feed the World to the World in 1985. And I bought it from Pete Burkett from the, the Rats and he signed that scaled off on the top. So like that, and then the bottom is Pete. So, um, but anyway, I just adore this bass guitar. This is this is what I would take uh, if the house went on fire. This is what I take. Okay, so I'm gonna go through some of the sounds. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we're gonna start with the both pickups open, okay, and the tone open. <laughs> Just, this thing just plays itself, it's so easy to play. Okay, so front pickup with the tone open. And now with the tone off. Oh man, I love 
love this thing so much. Okay, now the back pickups on these uh, are very thin because they're so far back. The, like there's probably, you probably get a pencil between that and the bridge, maybe. So, um, okay, back pickup with the tone open. And back pickup with the tone off. And whatever I told you, I can't play today. Uh, anyway, just um, these pickups have uh, precision style pickup in them. And that's why you can kind of get away with that. People think Steinbergers are really sterile and cold. But honestly, in a band situation, they're just so punchy and versatile. The problem is they're mad money. Crazy bread at the moment. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, if you come across them, buy it. Just a piece of history. Uh, the other thing... It, it, sorry, sorry, microphone. The other thing is it, it balances perfectly on the strap. There's no... There's no neck dive. There's no nothing. This one is the heaviest of them all, I think. And uh, but you could just gig night after night after night, and it wouldn't feel like it. 1981 Steinberger L2.